Good morning, Cloud Community, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are here midway through day two of our three days of coverage on theCUBE. My name's Savannah Peterson, here with my favorite cloud co-conspirator, Rob Strecce. Co-conspirator, I like that. I know, right? That was a new was, one for me today. That was today. good, that was good, that was good. <laughs> we, we get 30 segments to show, and say, I really try and yeah. spice it up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think, again, co-conspirating on loving the community and what's going on and yeah. what's happening within the community and the contributions that are being made back to the community. And I think that's a big discussion of what we're talking about today. So, I know. lots and of fun. Who better to have than our next two guests? Stevan and Mark, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you guys for having us. Yes. Such a busy day. Saw you on the big, cool main stage in there doing some keynote action. How was it? It seems like the reception's been great. Well, our team was up there and we announced our intention to contribute several projects to the CNCF. We couldn't be more excited about it. It includes Podman, Podman Desktop, and Bootsy. Um, that's a lot. Yeah. And that's super exciting. Stevan, why do you think it's so important to contribute these projects to the open source community? Uh, I, I really believe that uh, the, it is a great opportunity for us to innovate all together and to uh, bring um, all the aspects uh, that, uh, all the community aspects from um, this uh, cloud native uh, contributions and all the different projects that we are building here. I think with the donation of uh, Podman, Podman Desktop and, uh, and Bootsy, we bring a, no, a new opportunity for, uh, for uh, all uh, this cloud native uh, space to continue to innovate all together. Yeah, for people who aren't familiar with the three projects, I, I, I know what they are, but for, for the people who aren't. Not with the casual flex. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, and Podman, I, I love. And the fact we all love Podman, it, though. It runs on a Mac, so Podman yeah. Desktop. Uh, so <laughs> kind of help them understand why, why this is significant, each of those. Yeah, let me uh, just tell you a little bit about the projects. Um, Podman is an interactive uh, container engine. Well, it's for interactive and server use. Uh, it innovated from the start with the ability to run containers without any root or any elevated privileges at all. Uh, I continued to innovate with the support for the Kubernetes API. Uh, my favorite thing right now actually is a feature called Quadlets, uh, which allows you to take pods and containers and turn them into system services with a v dead simple text file that you could just copy from machine to machine. It's incredibly portable. Um, it also includes a couple of other tools. Uh, Builda is a tool that focuses on building container images. Uh, it's very suitable to uh, containerized pipelines. And Scopio, which is a bit of a Swiss Army uh, tool that uh, works with container images uh, and remote registries. Yeah. And, uh, and on the other side, uh, with, uh, with Podman Desktop, we built on top of, uh, of Podman to provide a nice user interface to work both with containers and, uh, and Kubernetes. So it's really uh, uh, an application, a desktop application that runs on Mac, Windows, and, uh, and Linux. Uh, it's for application developers. And uh, it, uh, it abstracts away all the configuration and the setup of all the different tools that are needed to work with these technologies. Um, so it has everything you need in order to work with containers. You can, of course, uh, build images. You can run containers. You can co connect to uh, OCI registries to uh, to pull and push uh, push images uh, as well. Uh, and uh, it goes uh, also beyond when you are building your own application. Uh, you can more easily uh, debug and inspect uh, your, your containers. And as Mark mentioned, it goes also a little bit further because it has uh, capabilities for Kubernetes. And um, I think what's very important with these tools is that from their inception, um, we took Kubernetes at, their, uh, at the, 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 the basis of where we uh, also want the developers uh, to, to go. Uh, so within Podman Desktop, you will find ways to use the capabilities of Podman with, uh, with Kubernetes, but you can also spin up a Kubernetes environment with Minikube or, uh, or Kind uh, locally, and then you will get a, a nice UI to work with these Kubernetes uh, objects. So this is making it very handy for the developers to uh, apprehend uh, the technologies because they don't need to remember all the, the, the CLI commands, for example. Uh, and uh, it's making adop 
the adoption of uh, the entire Kubernetes stack a little bit easier and, uh, and smoother uh, as well. And it's open. So, and the family is even uh, wider with, uh, with Bootsy, right, Mike? Yeah, so Bootsy is, you know, formally it's the youngest project of the three that we're talking about here, but it's based on 10 years of experience and battle-tested code from the RPM OS tree project. But what Bootsy does is it takes that, takes all that experience, but brings it to that Docker file container image building block. That, that, those building blocks built the entire ecosystem around us today, right? I'd be willing to bet that almost every technical person uh, in this room at this conference knows how to build a container, right? Um, congratulations, now you know how to configure, build, and update an operating system too. Right. No, that's great. I really using all the same tools, techniques. If you want to use CI CD systems that are oriented towards containers, you can adapt this to your operating system images. What I'm hearing from both of you here is it's about making it easy and also about being agile in terms of which environment or where you're doing things so that everyone can build and create wherever they are quickly and efficiently and easy. It's a pretty bold claim. What, in a great way. What was the discussion like internally when you were coming to the conclusion that it would be a great idea to donate these, these projects to power this innovation? Yeah, I mean, you know, Podman has been around for years now. Um, you know, started in 2017 as a commit and 2018 as actually Podman. Um, it's always been open source. In fact, the team takes great pride in being an upstream first team that is always engaged in the, with the community and not just Red Hat customers. Um, but when we were sitting down um, talking about Boot C and how appropriate and how much sense it made for the CNCF, like we're, we're taking the same language that everybody's using for their applications and, and, putting, and allowing people to use it for their operating system deployments as well. That discussion kind of snowballed. <laughs> and if you, take it, if you take the whole group together from Podman Desktop down to Boot C, we're, we're trying to offer a, a vision of using one language instead of tools for your entire environment, right? This is uh, really a complete, a, complete de a complete contribution that we see as like hand in hand, like they're, they're parts of a puzzle. Yeah. So I, you brought up Bootsy and I'm staring at your glasses. You're bringing the star power. Tell us what's going on there. There's three pairs of great glasses over so, there on and, YouTube. And there gentlemen. are a few, there are, hand, there are a handful more at the booth. Um, I will say that, so uh, if you Google B-O-O-T-S-Y, Bootsy, you'll probably find that the first result is Bootsy Collins, the great <laughs> funk bass player yes. uh, for par in Parliament Funkadelic yeah. and yeah. the James Brown band. But uh, so it's a little uh, tip of our cap to uh, to a funk I love rate. that. Bring in the <laughs> funk and the innovation. What a combo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I think uh, in general, uh, the importance of uh, developers yeah. uh, and in order to enable the developer to adopt the technologies we are building in the cloud native uh, ecosystem is, is very important. And I think at Red Hat, we've been investing uh, quite a lot onto uh, on to uh, making developers more productive, more efficient. That's been always a, a mission for, for us. And uh, Podman and Podman Desktop, they really are on, uh, on this line. And they are already quite popular solutions. So if you see, if you see Podman Desktop, it's been uh, downloaded uh, more than 1.5 million times by developers. So it's, it's already quite popular. So yeah. for us, it's it's really um, when we are uh, when we were having this discussion internally, it was really about how can we move this forward and how can we continue uh, on uh, on this uh, on this exciting uh, journey, and um, and uh, and yeah, for us, we are very excited and very happy to be able to work on tools uh, that helps other developers on the way they are shaping their application. It's also um, a fantastic opportunity for the entire community to, to, to innovate all together on, uh, on, uh, on these aspects. So. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that I know, the reason I know Podman Desktop was, uh, was at uh, Red Hat Summit earlier this year, and when Instruct Lab came out, you could use Instruct Lab on top of both open source, both on your laptop to start getting started and start like tinkering around with AI. AI is a big 
big piece of this. I know there's a connection there as well. How, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, when you are working with AI, uh, you are probably starting by, um, by adding AI to existing applications. And a lot of those existing applications are already containerized, already running on Kubernetes. So how can we tie the tools that the developer needs uh, to work with containers and Kubernetes, as well as the tools that they need in order to work with uh, the AI technologies. So that's really what we are trying to do uh, with the extensions and the work that has been introduced during Red Hat Summit. It's all about bringing solutions for the developers so that they can start their journey to add AI inside of their application. And still with the conveniency of the tools that they are already used to be, uh, to be using. How has the reception been? I mean, the smiles on your faces give me a little bit of an indicator, but I can imagine the community is really excited. I mean, I sure hope so. It's only, you know, we've, we've given it about an hour to find out. But, uh, you know, as soon as preliminary get, results, preliminary results. As soon results. as I get out of here, I'm going to check the, my LinkedIn posts and see how they're doing and, and you know, check, check the uh, interwebs and such. But uh, no, we're super excited. And, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. And, um, you know, I also just want to say in general, right, it, some of these projects have been around longer like Podman and we, it's really a signal that we want to innovate together in a vendor neutral space. Um, it's just a re-invitation for people to help shape these projects future and, and, uh, and we couldn't be excited, more excited about, uh, you know, hopefully who shows up to help. Yeah. And so I, I think that's a perfect thing. You set me up for my next question, which was, okay, we're here today. What, what does the future hold for these three, you know, three projects and how, how Again, you guys have been supporting it in an open source manner already. How, how do we go forward from here as well? Well, what we have on the, on the roadmap for, for Podman, um, we want to in, uh, increase, uh, sorry, excuse me, enhance the ability to work with OCI artifacts. Uh, container registries are, it's been a while already, they're not just for container images as we know. People are putting all sorts of things into container registries and we want Podman to have a, a bit easier ability to work with it, inspect those and, and work with those objects. Uh, we would like to increase the speed, this hopefully will we'll, we'll raise some ears, you know, the speed uh, of updating containers and the less bandwidth over the wire by only pulling new and changed files when you're updating a container image. Uh, and lastly, we want to enhance Podman Machine, which is a key component of Podman Desktop, uh, to bring in some like enterprise features and more customizability for that virtual machine that's used on Mac and Windows. Yeah, yeah and uh, on, on Podman Desktop, uh, similarly, uh, we have uh, the public roadmap, which is available on, uh, on our repository, but uh, it's multiple folds. The, primary, the, the, the first one is about uh, setting up and configuration of uh, all the tools and the environment for the developers. And then it's all about how we can make it easy to work with containers and Kubernetes. So how can I quickly access to the logs, get uh, terminals and, uh, and things like that. And uh, the last fold will be about the extensibility of the tool itself. Uh, in fact, the tool is, complete, is completely uh, open. So it supports other container engines. Um, and, uh, and it's completely extensible with extension points, so you can customize the entire UI uh, with specific workflows and experiences. Uh, so what we are expecting to see is uh, the, the community uh, joining forces on, uh, on uh, enriching, uh, making the tool richer in terms of capabilities uh, as well. Uh, we've been building these solutions with a lot of uh, feedback from, uh, from the end users as well, and uh, we expect that it's, uh, it's going to continue. Uh, so. Definitely yep. looking forward to it and definitely excited about that. Yeah. And on the boot C side, um, our, our next big milestone is quarter two next year, fully supported GA and, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, that's, one of the, that's one of the most important things, so we're getting all ready for that. We can't be more excited. Um, and at the risk of repeating myself, what's interesting about 
putting the OS in a container. Again, it's all these practices and, and like GitOps approaches to managing mm -hmm. infrastructure now suddenly apply to your entire environment. So we want to kind of build support, uh, you know, do blog posts and best practices around adapting your operating system patterns to cloud native environments. Yeah, I mean, I think we've been talking about it all this week, I think, especially with the stuff that you've been doing upstream with Kubert and, you know, mm -hmm. OpenShift uh, virtualization and things of that nature, now bringing that to, even it's down great. at the lower, lower level and being able to bring that more Operations like yeah. and like kind of the core Linux stuff have lived, and, and, and cloud native have kind of lived in separate worlds, yeah. and it was a bit clunky in how you manage your, uh, your fleet versus how you manage your cluster and applications on top. So Bootsy allows you to kind of pull that all in and have a consistent view. Exactly. Yeah, wow, I've, what an exciting project. I just, I have two more questions for you, because sure time is flying by. You brought up something that touches me in my core, and I think it's in the DNA of everyone in this room right now. Over 10,000 people, I think, actually, or 9,000 people. You talked about how important it is for us to innovate together. Why is that so important? And I, I personally think it's more important now than ever, but I have my opinions. I want to hear yours. If I go, I'll go yeah, first. Yeah, go for it. Um, you know, look, we've gotten where we are based on open standards, mm -hmm. right? Like, the Open Container Initiative is really important. So all of these, like, I mean, that's the basis of where we are today. We innovate and we collaborate because sometimes innovation, like we don't need five different ways to do something when we can come to a common approach, right? And a lot of times those building blocks and those, those lower level components really can be shared across other operating systems, across other patterns, right? Like, and just for the record, like, you know, Bootsy is for Linux, not just for RHEL, right? right? We, we can't wait for other, you know, you know, I hope, I'd love to see wider adoption. We've actually seen that in terms of uh, in other other Linux vendors have already experimented with it, and we've seen we've seen some communication there. So we're, you know, we're really excited there. Sorry, it's great. Yeah, love it. I love your excitement. Never <laughs> apologize for passion. I feel like the world tries to put us in these little boxes sometimes. Passion is what it's makes change, and it's in, it's infectious in the best way. It's the best kind of infection. <laughs> it's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> anyway, Savan, why do you think it's so? important so i think there's a lot of things that are uh, evolving in uh, in the space uh, today especially with uh, the rise of uh, of ai uh, so we uh, we have exactly as mark mentioned i think we have opportunities to bring smart people all together, but also bring more context and uh, a, a, rich, a wider variety of uh, of challenges uh, all together and look at them uh, from a pragmatic and uh, and and uh, an open uh, approach uh, as well. So I, I do believe that I agree with you. Now is probably a very exciting time to innovate all together. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I the, love it. The standards we have today are not going to be ready for the workloads of tomorrow. So we need to work together to build those standards. So true. Especially with the velocity, everything's going out right now. I think it's a great point, Mark. Mm -hmm. All right, final question for you both because you're both fabulous guests. And you tease this out a little bit, but this, we'll get a little more specific with it. When we're sitting at this desk in London or in Atlanta at next year's KubeCons, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't say today? That we are in the CNCF sandbox, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready. Yeah. I mean, we're ready for people to come and talk to us now, mm -hmm. uh, but we'd really like to you know, reaffirm that and, uh, and you, know, uh, you know, talk more about Bootsy, talk more about what's coming next in Podman, and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to bring back some uh, you know, new features and innovations that have come from this uh, engagement. Love awesome. it, Mark. What about you, Stefan? Yeah, uh, I think uh, Mark answer is spot on, <laughs> actually. So, uh, yeah, it's ab absolutely uh, being uh, going into this phase of, uh, of having the project uh, into the sandbox and, uh, and looking forward of having uh, uh, shaping the future of uh, more developer-focused solutions uh, as well, for, at least for Podman Desktop. Uh, that's, uh, that's what we are looking for. Uh, bringing this excitement we've been getting with all our users and the, the community, which is already active on the, on the project, but building this to the next stage uh, 
is definitely what well, we are looking for. Well, if your excitement is any indication of how the community is going to feel, I'm very confident. We'll be talking about the sandbox. We'll be able to tell those stories. We'll have fun use cases of how people have used these projects in ways we can't even imagine right now. Savannah and Mark, thank you so much for being on today. This is a great start to thank the Thank you guys so much. Appreciate thank the you. time. Yeah. yeah, such a pleasure. And Rob, always a joy to learn with you. I, I love it. I, I love digging deep into the projects and especially the contributions. This is fantastic. So. I know. And the excitement. Uh, very much. Very much so. I hope you all can feel how exciting and fun it is to learn here at KubeCon North America in Salt Lake City, Utah. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.